Good day. My name is Charles Kermis and I'm the owner of Kermis Audio, the manufacturer and creator of the Ultrasonic Ultimate Vinyl Record Restoration System. Why do we call it a restoration system? Because that's what it is. Everyone for the last 30 years have been cleaning records using either soaps or brushes. Some people even put them in their dishwashers. God forbid the label. Some people use hand spin clean, cleaning machines. Others use vacuum turntable looking like machines applying soap and then brushing the record and then afterwards vacuuming it. Other systems have a area where you put in a record and using an ultrasonic relying on the ultrasonic to clean the record. We found over the last three years of research that many of these systems that are out there actually do not clean the record. And how clean is a record? The only way that you know that a record has been cleaned is if you see the difference in the high-end timber and the dynamic sound stage that results after a cleaning. Some of these expensive systems for four or five thousand dollars in the case of an ultrasonic, basically you put the record in and after four or five minutes the record supposedly is clean. Yes, it looks clean to the eye, but is it clean? Have we cleaned what's in the grooves? Our system's been developed giving you actual visual feedback. Our system comprises of an ultrasonic that is at 35 kilohertz, very safe frequency. We're not at 25 where you have to use headphones and we're not at 150 that sandblasts your record. And we combine that after a five minute cycle of uh, applying a little alcohol in the tank. We then use a surfactant that we spray on the record and we brush in with a brush. What that does, it allows now the cavitating bubbles when they explode to have the 500 mile an hour plasma wave now work itself into the record's grooves. Very important. Here's a record that's been in my personal collection since 1976. It's a 74 pressing uh, from Promotone BV, the Rolling Stones, it's only rock and roll and it was produced by the Glimmer Twins uh, back in 74. You can see it's been sitting in its sleeve and you can see fungus on it, there are fungus spots, you can see that it's dusty, it was in a paper jacket, and if I put this into one of the other cleaning systems that are out there and run it for five minutes or just let this spin by hand and then you know air dry the, the record, playing it will not necessarily remove all the cracks and popples which you hear, and sometimes we cannot remove those because the record is too far gone, it's being damaged beyond repair, but it looks good, but you don't really hear the timber and the breadth of the music. Our system, when we put this in the washer, the 40 milliliters or 1.4 ounces of 70% alcohol with the distilled water, 6 liters or nearly 2 gallons in the tank, when this turns around for 5 minutes, allows the system to degrease the record, either removing a brand new record's release agent that bubbles out of the vinyl when the record's being pressed. It's not where someone is actually spraying PAM or some agent onto the pressing machine. It's actually part of the plastic and the effect where the heat then draws that out to the surface. Uh, and also at the same time, um, uh, it'll remove fingerprint grease and other greasy contaminants. The next five minute cycle is the key where we take a surfactant spray where we spray at 12, 4 and 8 o'clock on the record as you'll see in our training video and we brush it in to the record. We then place the record in the machine and now what this does, it actually now allows the plasma when the bubbles break and the plasma is created to have that 500 mile an hour way now brush a cleaning agent which is basically water soluble, it's only one or two percent ethyl glycol or diol 2, onto the record surface which is safe and into the grooves while the record is turning. The interesting part is where other systems you really don't know visually whether you've cleaned the record or not. In our case when we take this out after the first five minutes with the surfactant and reapply the surfactant onto the surface and brush it in with a goat hair brush if we see now white paste coming out, it indicates to me, the user, that we're actually bringing out the contaminants, whether they be fungus, 
more importantly, whether they be leftover films of prior cleaning agents. So we apply the surfactant, brush it in, as in the training video, put it back in the machine, another five minutes, and then repeat the step. We repeat the step until we no longer see a white, toothpaste large amount of white cream come out of the record on both sides. When we see that, that means that that's the last five minute cycle. So I know that I've done the best in order to bring this record and restore it. We're not just cleaning it, making it look shiny. In our system, sometimes you'll see the scratches on the record. You won't hear them, but we will remove all of those coatings that people have applied to, just like myself since the 70s, where as soon as I heard there was a new product that removed you know, cracks and whatever, cracking sounds, popping sounds, I bought it. Put the spray on, ah, it was great. I didn't hear the cracks anymore, or didn't hear many of them. Well, all you're doing is you're coating the record and the needle is riding higher in the groove. So what we've done here is really a system where it's not, well, is it another five minutes, is it another 10 minutes? We actually allow you to see when you finish using the surfactant and the cleaning process that we have. Some of the other interesting things that we have made, why do we only clean four records? Well, first of all, we clean two 33s at the same time in here. We then clean a 78, which can be a shellac or a glass record, we're safe. And then we can clean a 45 all simultaneously. You notice that I could obviously put in eight records in here. We don't do that. Why? In our studies, it's very important to see that we have a very specific spacing between the records. Anything closer, the cavitation of the ultrasonic will not breach the wax mark. And if it doesn't reach the wax mark, we are not taking advantage of the ultrasonic over here. In our system, we have four heads. That makes us different. There are 45 watt heads, four of them. Some people purport to just a 90 watt total power for a whole complete ultrasonic cleaning system. That doesn't clean your records. That's basically a, a, a jewelry cleaning system, if you wish. So we put a lot of design in this, especially where we do not skewer records. You don't see a bar going through the record that damages the label, damages the plastic underneath, which then reduces the value of the record. We have the records just float on a patent pending and patented suspension system. So that's what we do that's different. Again, here we have a glass record that was made for KDKA in 1962. On our website you can hear the before cleaning and after cleaning. And this just took two minutes just with the ultrasonic uh, running in the system without anything added to the record. Hearing is believing, not just seeing that the record is clean. And many of our customers have been enjoying the cleaning process, where what they've done is they've taken a record, they put it in, they then use the mechanical method of drying that we show you in our video, and then played it. And through the stages until there was no more whitish paste coming out, they saw the improvement in bandwidth of breadth of the music, lowering of the noise level in the record itself to the point where now all they do is they just take a look at that simple element that we instruct you with if we don't have white toothpaste coming out of the record we know that the record it's the, it's the last five minute cycle unfortunately with records that have a lot of fungus or have had a lot of cleanings with either these vacuum based systems or systems where people have applied soap and so on Many a time we don't know the provenance of the record, so you don't know who owned the record and what they did. And it may take five, six times, seven times sometimes in five minute cycles to attain a nice clean record. Well that's what we want, don't we, in an end result? We want to hear the music, the musicality, hear the producer's vision of what the artist is putting on vinyl. That's what our responsibility is as audiophiles, as music lovers, as custodians. We feel that we have the best system that's out there and we've made it affordable. Ultrasonic cleaning technology has been around for 30 years. Uh, they are not worth $3,000. On our commercial business side, we buy ultrasonic cleaners for $300. We obviously have modified a commercial cleaner. We've made our own 
patented suspension system for us to safely wash records without damaging. So those are the things that one should look for when they're looking for an ultrasonic restoration system. Cleaning doesn't assure you visually that the record's clean. Hearing on audio equipment is the end result and we've been able to show you by our use of our surfactant and our brush whether the record is in fact clean or not. Suggest you take a look at our instructional video, take a look at the other information that we have on our Duck website which is www.kermusaudio, K-I-R-M-U-S-S, -S, audio, all in the same word, dot com. And hear the difference, not just only see the difference. Thank you. Thank you.